Welcome back. I kicked my phone into the water. I kicked my phone into the ocean. And we usually film my phone. The great thing about these phones is they've got these triple cameras now where you get this great HDR footage. And now we're using my DSLR, which we've never used before to film. But we're going to hopefully make it work and hopefully it'll look as good as it does when we're filming with a phone, which sounds ridiculous. It's going to look even better. The camera only films in 1080, though. It doesn't film in 4K like the phone does. Somehow, this is the windiest... <laughs> August we've ever had on history. We're trying out a new format here on the Whiskey Wimps this month and we would love for you guys to comment down below and let us know if you like the new format. The goal is to bring you guys more information and because we've already got the fun part down, right? Like we're having plenty of fun enough already. I guess we're All right. Matt's fun. having a little bit of fun. I'm having way too much fun and we're gonna still do that but we want to be able to bring you guys plenty of information. So what we've decided to do is we're having my lovely wife pour us blind pours from one of the 100 plus bottles that are in the house, which are all different bottles. We even told her she could open up any closed bottles to make these pours. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a rating system now. Yeah. And what, how does the rating system work, Matt? Well, we're gonna first be judging based off of taste. Smell. Smell. And, and feel. Mouth feel, mouth palate. Feel. Mm -hmm. so, so the first set of, cat we're gonna have six different categories that we score between zero to five in. And the first, three categories will fall under the drinkability, which will be the nosing notes, the tasting notes, and then the mouthfeel and palate or mouthfeel and finish. Right. And then after we get those knocked out and give our own scores, I'll give my zero through five on each. Matt will give his zero through five on each. And then we'll move on to the portion where we pull the bottle Thank out you. of this bag. Thank you, Trader Joe's. And then we'll go into the second three categories, which will be the value categories, and those will be based on the story, the availability, and the price. Right. So six total different categories to score, zero through five, and then hopefully give you guys a... Uh, More well-rounded knowledge of the whiskey that we're having here. Yeah, and, and of course the first three categories are extremely subjective. You know, it depends on what you had to eat that day. Everybody's palate's a little different. That being said, like people find different, like there are notes that people seem to find the same, oh, yeah. like across people that have never met each other and are sharing tasting notes, like they find the same things. It, th that being said, it is quite subjective. Like I, I had a salad today and that's it so that I could taste as best as possible, not have a bunch of spicy food and not jack up my palate with that stuff. And the third, the second uh, three, the second part of the category. The second three? The second three, right. Because <laughs> the, the first three are, you know, nose, ta yeah. <laughs> nose notes, tasting notes, and the, the mouth feel and finish. And then the second three are the, the more objective. You know, the, the MSRP is MSRP. Exactly. It might vary a little bit, but it's pretty much mostly set at a... Yeah, and we'll give you, like, you know, what the MSRP and, like, what your average, what you're seeing on the shelf, and, you know, what we feel is a fair price. Yeah, so then again, it's going to be subjective. It's going to be like, you know, what's the value? Is like everybody has different values, what right. they're willing to pay for a bottle, what they're not willing to pay exactly. for a bottle. I'm kind of trying to go over a new uh, course of action for myself and, and try to stick to only getting bottles at MSRP and not um, entertain anything that's getting above there to hopefully have an influence of bringing down, you know, the the price on, on bottles through... Oh, with I'm going to keep buying it over MSRP then. Yeah, vote with your dollar. I mean, you, Matt picked up a bottle of Booker's today for $20 under MSRP. We, we, we want to see more of that stuff happening. Exactly. Yeah, um, and not these exorbitant prices that have been driven by... But it's it's it's, a, it's economics, right? It's like, I mean, it's, it's, supply and demand. Exactly. If people want to pay it, the people are going to pay it. Hey, That's, if they can move Blanton's for $170 a bottle when <laughs> MSRP is... What, 56? 55, 56. Or yeah. Somewhere I mean, in there, 55, keep, 60. keep doing what you're doing, but you're not going to make me pay that much. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get let's get on the nose here. Our first whiskey today. Our first this whiskey is a whiskey this month. month. <laughs> oh, oh, right. <laughs> that was a long intro, huh? I'm Brian. I'm Matt. We're the Whiskey Wimps. <laughs> off to a great start. Look, the wind died down for us. It's like magic. You oh, I just jinxed it. Jinxed it now. Oh, son Watch of a biscuit. It. All the wind is going to come. I just hope that we're not as dark as we look in the freaking monitor, dude. <laughs> getting like some cherries. Getting like something. a like a red cherry. Yeah, I was going to say something lighter than that. Yeah, a mm. very, if it's going to be a cherry, it's going to be a like, 
or cherry that's not quite right. Definitely not one of those deep, dark black cherries. We're no, no. talking like one that somehow magically still tastes good, even though it's bright red. No, that's, yeah. That's what you're yeah. talking about? I can get on board with that. There's a little bit of grassiness in there, too, somehow. Sure you're not, you're just picking that up from the yard. <laughs> <laughs> Getting a lot of oak leaves flying in. Oh, yeah, oak leaves. I think this might be a blend of rye and it, it's either a rye or it's a blend of I was gonna, rye. I was going to say like there's nothing unpleasant on the nose. I'm fine. There's no there's no burn. This must be a fairly light proof. I'm guessing like I, I think it's a fairly light proof, and I think this is a bottle that probably has been open for a little bit too. I'm not getting. I'm going to give it a th three out of five. Three out of five. Okay. You know, it's pleasant, it's not too rough, it doesn't burn, but I'm also just not picking up enough. Again, this could be the, uh, the elements that we're definitely dealing with right now. <laughs> There's candy, it's, it's not, I'm gonna give it a three and a half. Am I allowed to do that? You wanna? I wanna give it more than you're giving it. Wow. <laughs> Can it's I up do? to you. You're gonna have to put a little thing of like a half a Glencairn glass. <laughs> I'm giving it a three and a half. I'm giving it a three and a half. It's uh, it's good because it's there could be a lot more to it. It's it's fairly light, which isn't a bad thing necessarily. It's just no. I'm I'm looking for more. Definitely a rye. Yeah, I'm gonna say after after tasting now, it's mm -hmm. I'm not. It's not a bull rye. It's not. That's not a blend. Mm -hmm. That's that's a rye. Yeah, it's not really coating the mouth very well either. Now, Brian, you were telling me earlier you have a, a trick now for sipping whiskey. Oh, you get that taste? Yeah. Okay, here it is. You ready? I'm, um, Watch this. I'm ready. I learned this. Uh, you were with me today when I learned this technique, whether you know it or not. I'm driving down the street, and there's this uh, couple standing on the corner, and dude goes in. They're like shopping downtown <sighs> fast, so dude goes in for a little smooch, and then he does one of these. All I could assume is that he's getting a little extra taste on that, that, on, that on that smooch. Yeah, so, you know, it didn't work for the whiskey. Oh, oh. I take it back. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on the mouth. It doesn't, it doesn't, not in the coating. It, this no, the coating is most the likely a filtered whiskey. It's probably chill filtered. You're not getting that, that coatiness. And when I'm looking for a, well, let's, <laughs> well, you know, for me, like, a whiskey that of my preference would be the one that, like, kind of coats the whole mouth, coats the entire palate. Well, that's our third category, though. No, we're going for just the tasting notes right now. Which I'm getting that, those those grassy kind of mm -hmm. rye notes. That you the get rye is rye. strong. Yeah, it's like, you know, not too strong on the mintiness, of, not the mint that you get on some ryes, but just like... No, I would, I'm definitely not a mint guy, so if I would, I would definitely taste mint. I'm not really getting that on this one right now. But it's sweet. It's There's a niceness to it. You know, I'm, I'm going to give it an, a... Uh, I'm gonna give another three and a half on the tasting on the taste. notes. Yeah, there's, you know, you got the the classic rye stuff. There's nothing really extra. It's, it's just mm -hmm. above average, you know. See, that's what I'm gonna, I'm gonna change up here. I'm going two on this one. Okay. For me, this it doesn't have enough taste here to keep me. You no, know, it's good for like a, a taste, and but I'm I'm done. I, I wouldn't pour myself as much as we poured here today. I'm seeing where I'm seeing right off the bat that you're gonna be a little bit the harsher critic, which is good. Yeah. I need somebody who's gonna be a harsher critic. I'm sometimes I'm too nice to people, which I mean you don't know anything about that, but No, I don't. <laughs> well on, on mouthfeel, I'm gonna give it a two because it's like oh. it's thin. Yeah. It's not hanging around, which you don't really expect from rise, but there are rise out there that I have that are just super mouth coating and just like leave it a nice warm I was gonna say I was gonna give it a two as well as like I was almost gonna say one, but I feel like it's not it's not a one to me. Like a one would just be like almost water. This one at least coats the mouth a little bit. Right. Right. And we're we're definitely being kind of kind of harsh here. But we, you know, to get a five, I think it's just got to be like phenomenal, like uh, undeniable. Yeah. Like so, we're talking like five is like stratospheric. Just like you need to like go buy this whiskey right now and find it. Yes. Whereas a two is like, hey, at least it's not zero. Like exactly. we're giving it something. We're right? giving it something. I mean, it coats the glass a little bit better than I think. I feel like it coats the mouth. I finished it, <laughs> so it must not be that bad. <laughs> Well, you know, I'll tell you what I'm hoping it's not. I'm hoping it's not the High West Double Rye because I feel like I would want to give that a slightly higher score than I did on this. But, mm -hmm. hey, that's the, you know, that's the thing about doing the blind tasting. You just kind of give it the uh, that as objective of a subjective vote mm -hmm. or score you can give it. You know, just not know what it is. And just... Is that Old Fitzgerald you have in there? Is that, did you have an old a rye Old Fitzgerald? No. No? 
I don't know. I'm curious to find out what it is. You want to find out what it I is? I want to find Ready? out what it is, too. And at this point, we'd love for you guys to let us know in the comments if you want to know. So we've kind of kept you blind with us here today on this one, not knowing what it is as, as well as we're not. But if you guys want to know what it is we're tasting while we don't know the whole time, we'll put a picture at the bottom on the screen as we're doing all of our blind tastings. We'll do that. Just leave a comment down below. We'll, we'll put some votes up for a poll on YouTube as well and see what people prefer if you want to join us on the journey of not knowing until we get to this point or if you just want to know the whole time. So leave a comment down below. Let us know which one you prefer. And if you don't let us know, then we're going to go with whoever speaks up the most. So yeah. All right, let's pull it out and see what it is, eh? Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Let me... Oh, it... it. You gonna feel it first? Oh, snap. I haven't had this one in a long time. You know what it is? Maybe. I, let me see if I can tell by feeling. Okay. All right, haven't had this in a while. I can tell by feeling it. It's, mm -hmm. it's Whistle Pig. It's really? Whistle Pig, yeah, and it's the... Um, the eight-year bottle? I think it's the farm stock rye. There it is, farm stock rye. It's only 86 proof. So the proof was, I mean, yeah, I think we got the proof on the nose. Yeah. Now, Whistle Pig does kind of have a cool story. Um, they... Does it have anything to do with the pig? Well, <laughs> a Whistle Pig is a groundhog, I guess, or what we would call a ground squirrel or groundhog. That's a whistle pig. I, I no think pig. they have a lot of them in Vermont. And okay. They call them whistle pigs. And maybe on the farm in Vermont where they're doing stuff. So the, You the let us know down below if you come from Vermont, if you call them. The interesting thing about this one is that they are actually, so it's a blend. They, mm -hmm. they were sourcing stuff for a long time while making their own spirit there in Vermont. And this is the one where they blended some of their own spirit. I think this is the first bottle that they actually blended some of their own spirit into the whiskey. Okay. And there's some Canada rye in here as well. And then, um, you know, MGP, some Indiana stuff. And mm -hmm. You got uh, their stuff. It's a two-year-old spirit for them. That's why we're probably giving it a little score. It's got that two-year blended in. They're trying to get their you know feet under them as far as being distillers. They're not doing it as long as MGP or this right. ten-year Canadian uh, rye that they blended in here. It is 100% rye, I believe. It's just yeah, uh, well maybe not 100% rye mash bills, but uh, there's kind of a cool story there. Like like the story, I would on honestly give like a. I would give the story a a four, honestly, because it's kind of cool. Like, mm -hmm. just they're they're fairly open with what they're doing as far as like blending and what they're putting in. Like, they've given you exactly what they're putting in. They're letting you know they're not doing their product. They're not trying to market it as mm -hmm. their own. I don't think, at least not with this bottle. They're letting you know, hey, we've been you know sourcing, and now we're finally putting some of our own spirit that we've made into it. And uh, they, they do the triple toa thing we've talked about, where they're getting their own water from their land there as well as growing their own uh wood to make their own barrels and then also growing their own grain um right there on the property so as far as story goes because of all that stuff i'd give it a four on story which the reason we're including story into the grading scale is because whiskey is so much more than just something you're feeling and tasting and smelling it's it's like the whole experience like the way the bottle looks the way the bottle feels uh, is all part of the story to me. Like, I mean, even sometimes the journey of getting the bottle is the story itself. Yeah, that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole story in the story. There is a whole story in the story. Shoot. Yeah, shirts. Shirts. Shirts? There goes our bag. There goes our bag. <laughs> <laughs> Windy August. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, for, for, the, for that reason, I, I give it a four on the story. It's a high five. It, it intrigues me. You know, I, I like I'll give it a four. Okay. I'll, I do love the cap, though, how it's that metal cap. So... What's MSRP on this thing, roughly? About 74. 70, about 74. About, <laughs> 70, yeah, about 74, yeah. 29. <laughs> 73, 98 if you want to get down to the penny. But, Which, uh, uh, I guess we're supposed to do availability before price, though. I, I think that Whistle Pig is, I, I don't know about the farm stock per se. You know, I've seen Whistle Pig in almost every liquor store I've been into. Okay. And we do have to take into account. So we're going to, when we give our availability, like, Keep in mind, we're in California, and we seem to have access to a lot of things. Like, I, I know people in Pittsburgh and, like, people in other parts of the country have a hell of a time finding, like, regular Buffalo Trace or Eagle Rare, whereas we see it on literally every single shelf out here. So, yeah, and we get the giant bottles, too. <laughs> yeah, we get big old bottles of Eagle Rare for, like, 50 bucks. And yeah. it's, like, it's... So, when we're given our score of availability, we've got... Just, this is based on California. This is where even our objective side of the rating is going to have a subjective... Mm -hmm. 
marker because we can get a lot of stuff here in California. You know, even here in where my less populated area, I can drive around and find all kinds of stuff on the shelf. So, um, including all that Eagle Rare, man. I, <laughs> I showed, I sent a picture of to a buddy in Pittsburgh. Um, that uh, stand from third base, that Eagle Rare. Yeah, with all the Eagle Rares. And he's yeah. like, that's crazy. Like, <laughs> you know, 30 bucks or whatever. Um, so availability, I'll give it a... I don't, see, no, I don't see the farm stock everywhere now. I do see whistle pig, but I don't always see the farm stock on the shelf. Like, I'll see the six year or the... Uh... Availability, I'm going to give it a four. Okay. I'm, I'm going to go three and a half just because I don't, I don't recall seeing farm stock everywhere like I do the other versions of whistle pig. Um, I know it's supposed to be the more objective mm-hmm. score, but... And as far as price goes, I would not pay $70 for another bottle of this. Not a chance. Not price, even a chance, dude. Price, I'm gonna give it. Like I'd consider paying thirty bucks for this bottle. Yeah, I was gonna say I'll give it a one. Yeah, and because I'm a little nicer, I'm gonna give it a two. <laughs> <laughs> I just because I I, I have a hard time dropping a one. But like if it was a hundred bucks, I'd give it a one because I'd be like, that's just ridiculous. But it's 70, I mean, seventy-two bucks or whatever. Yeah, seventy-two bucks. But you know, getting out there with the tax and everything, you're you're walking out the door at least eighty bucks in the hole. Yeah, for this thing. So yeah, like, that's you're probably why. more accurate. I'm just, I'm just gonna be, be a little nicer, I guess. But th- for me, like, f- for the score that I gave it for the taste, and then seeing it for close to eighty dollars. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Well, I'm, a, I'll stand by my number regardless. But <laughs> maybe, stand. maybe it's this because, because I took the 15 year uh, cork and put <laughs> it on top instead. I'm like, ah, it's at least it's got that nice heavy freaking. <laughs> Big old dense cork on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's giving a little extra value for me. <laughs> oh shoot! Oh man, that was a good one. Yeah, I think that was a good. Again, leave a let comment. Us know. Up. Yeah, let us know, please. Like, if you if you like this format, we're gonna try it all month, and we'll you know play around with it. And if it's something that works, I, we'll we'll man, keep going. We'll keep going. We'll do yeah. it like this all the time. Maybe we do some bonus episodes where we do other fun stuff because like this is every every episode is what's in a bag now but we're yeah scoring it we both don't know what it is it's we cool. both don't know yeah i like it this way this is this is fun i enjoy huh? it nerding out nerding out over whiskey because everything is better with whiskey and friends